the northwest of Scotland around Torridon, home to the oldest rocks in the British Isles. These include ancient crust, the basement, Louisian complex, and on top, the Torridon Group sandstones, a sedimentary cover deposited in the Proterozoic era, that's a billion years ago. This is the unconformity at the base of the Torridon Group. Well, most of these rocks are apple cross formation, a sequence of thick bedded, coarse grained sandstones deposited by ancient rivers. But locally, below the apple cross formation, we find the diabeg formation, which are finer grained sandstones and siltstones. So how do these various sedimentary rocks relate to one another, along with the older Louisian basement? Well, let's visit the countryside near the village of Shieldegg, on the southern shore of Loch Torridon. Well, we've walked up above uh, the village of Shieldegg, and these outcrops here are quartzofelspathic gneisses, part of the Lewisian complex. You can make out this strong deformation fabric in this quartzofelspathic rock. Okay, so what lies on top of the Lewisian? Well, let's look up here. Well, this promontory behind me is the Shield Egg Inlier of Louisian Nice. And we can trace it up to here, but then if I just spin around and look up the hill behind me, you can see there's the last piece of Louisian, and then we've got all this bedded material on top, which is the Torridonian sandstone. So the unconformity runs down this hillside here behind me now, down towards the sea. Well that's quite interesting isn't it, because the beds up top are here are that orientation, but the boundary is running down the hill. So the bedding in the Torridonian is discordant to the unconformity, or at least the contact between the Torridonian and the underlying Lewisian Nices. Well, let's go down to the sea and see if we can make more sense of this. Well, I've come down to the road and these are the old Louisian Nices again in this road cutting, uh, pretty clear. But let's see what's down there by the loch side, down on the water's edge. So this is the Diabeg Formation. It's the lowermost part of the Torridon Group and underlies the Apple Cross Formation. And you can see it's a very different fasces. It's very flaggy, it's got this fine parting, which if I look at it, I can see is made of fine sandstone and maybe some siltstone layers as well, fine partings of siltstone. So it's a radically different fasces to the Apple Cross Formation. Well, it's worth looking at a bit more detail at the Diabeg Formation. There's some pretty interesting features in it. Let's look down at these outcrops here. Perhaps you can make out these, these ripples coming through here on this uh, fine sandy layer. 
you'll also down here on this bedding plane just ignore this uh, black algal growth on here but look at the uh, sediments underneath here you can see these features coming through which are coarser sand filled mud cracks indicating that this uh, silty layer uh, dried out and desiccated and made cracks that have been filled in by the overlying uh, slightly coarser sandstone. So perhaps some rather shallow standing water within which these uh, rippled sandstone uh, beds are laid down and then periods of desiccation drying out of this water body uh, so that you can get those um, uh, desiccation cracks filled in with the later sediment. So an idea of a gentle plane with sediment being flushed in across it. Well, if we continue along the shore and back up to the road, we encountered the Louisian basement again. These sheared gneisses and pegmatites. Well, to make sense of these relationships we've been looking at on this hillside, let's step back away and uh, sketch up some uh, field relationships. Well, let's just continue on our way around the bay and we'll get our view and put all these rocks into context. Well, we've come to this promontory that pokes out into the bay and it's a really good vantage point to capture this hillside. So we went up that hillside, to the right hand side there's the Louisian, those smooth light coloured outcrops of Louisian gneiss, and high on the hillside going up towards the cloud are those horizontal benches which pick out the bedding in the torrid group rocks. They're the massive sandstones, we can follow those all the way across here into that gully, but then if you look on the left hand side of the gully there, and over on those lighter slopes you can see outcrops of Louisian again with the Torridon group rocks going up into the cloud again with those horizontal benches and we know that's Louisian over there because we saw it in the road cutting down there with those pegmatite bits and the nice banding. The diabed group that we saw is down there on the water's edge so the thin bedded silty fine sand underlies the apple cross formation those thicker bedded sandstones higher on the hillside that goes up into the cloud. So those are the rock types that we've seen on those hillsides and along the uh, loch side as well and in the road cutting. Let's put this together onto a sketch. So that's a rough template. Now let's um, sketch on the unit. So we put, saw some Louisian in the road cutting there and we reckon these pieces here are Louisian. And similarly we had Louisian up the ridge, that bump there, and on the road cutting just when we came down off our first outcrops. So there is our um, distribution of um, Louisian. as a first pass. Now let's put in the diabeg formation which was just down in here, more or less horizontal, just along the bay. So that's it at the bottom, just down there at the uh, foot of the hillside. So now let's pick out the bedding which we can see forming these cliff lines within the hillside that's wooded up from the sea. And we can see that these come down something like this and across right up in towards the clouds. We can see up at the clouds as well that they come right across. Something like that. So let's put in the um, main torrid and group rocks, which is the upper cross formation, which are what forming these big cliffs. And we'll just I'll use brown for these to pick out the torrid and group, and they were essentially. Well, for the most part horizontal, except in that gully area where they seem to swing down um, and sort of come down towards the sea a bit, but not much. 
something like that. So now let's just interpret it up, put the boundaries on and interpret the relationships between the two formations within the Torren group and the underlying Lewisian, or more critically, the adjacent Lewisian. So we have a contact that bound the Lewisian that come down to create a trough that contains the bay. And the bedding in the apple cross formation must onlap and bank against the retaining walls of this trough. Or let's give it a bit better name, a valley, a paleo valley. So I'll just draw these in with these arrows, or half arrows, to represent the onlap. And now we can see how the diabeg formation works. It just sits as a small puddle at the base of the Paleo Valley. So I'll just sketch in where the Paleo Valley goes underwater. It will just come in below sea level and pop out the other side. So we have that sort of relationship with the diabeg formation forming the lowermost fill to our Paleo Valley. Just label it up. Diabeg formation, apple cross formation, and this is the shield egg in Lyre, over there to our right, which is out to the west. So we can just put a scale in, that's what, a couple of kilometres across there that we've been. We've got probably something like uh, 300 metres worth of visible um, topography in here, above sea level, and that's west and that's east. So there, rather crudely, is our cross-section to explain the relationships between the two patches of Lewisian that form the retaining walls of a Paleo Valley. The bottom of the Paleo Valley has got a fill of those uh, laminated uh, siltstones and fine sandstones with the ripples and mud cracks in, um, forming a, a layer just at the bottom, kept within the Paleo Valley, and then the main Applecross formation coming in and completely flooding out over the Paleo Valley, filling up the valley and over the surrounding uh, ridges that define that valley. So a simple cartoon for how the stratigraphy works here. And we can recognise these relationships on the geological map with these ridges forming the modern promontories that poke out into Loch Torridon. And these promontories are largely Lewisian and we can see around the edge of the bay here we've got outcrops of Torrigant rocks, largely the Darbeg formation and then moving up onto the hillside above we have the main thickness of the Torrigant group, the Applecross formation forming the cliff lines that we saw going up towards the cloud. So we can interpret these Paleo Valleys on the map and the Paleo Valleys have fairly significant relief, something like two or three hundred metres worth so that's a pretty rugged landscape, and it's a billion years old. So the Torridon area has these components of Precambrian geology. We can read the map, and we can use the landscapes to tell that story.